Hey there, how's it going everybody? So I wanted to do a quick follow-up video to my last video on five common Python mistakes and explain one of those mistakes in a bit more detail. So one of the things that I talked about in that video was mutable default arguments and the issues that you can run into when using those. And it seems like there were still a lot of people confused by how those work. And after going back and watching that video again, I realized that I could have added in some extra details that would have made that a lot easier to understand. So I wanted to make a quick follow follow-up video and try to make sure uh, that that's a bit more clear as to what's going on there. So I have my example from that last video open. And in case you missed that video, let me go over the problem one more time. Uh, so we have a function here called add employee. Uh, so let me explain what this function is meant to do. So it takes a single employee as its first argument and also a list of employees here called employee list. And then it's simply going to append uh, this employee that we pass in to that list and then print out that employee list. So we can see here that the employee list has a default argument set to an empty list. Uh, and an empty list is a mutable data type. So what we want to happen here is if we don't pass in an employee list to the function, then it should just create a new one from scratch for us. But let's actually see what this does. So I have an existing list of employees down here. Uh, so let me add a new employee and I'm going to use that function uh, to add an employee to that list. So I'll just add an employee of Corey. I'm gonna pass in that existing list that we want to append to. And now it should print out that employee list. So if I run that, then we can see that that works fine. Uh, our employee was added to that employee list. But now let's add a couple of employees without providing an existing list. So I will add Corey here, and I'll also add an employee of John. So if I save that and run it, then what we're going to expect happens here is that since we're not passing in a default or a list here, it's going to use the default of an empty list and just add that one employee to that empty list. And the second time through, we would expect that John will also get added to an empty list since that's the default and we didn't provide an existing list here. But if I save that and run it, then we can see that it seems like it used that same list twice and it added John on here uh, to this list that was created here, which is kind of strange. And if we keep doing this, then it's just going to keep adding to that list. So that's a bit weird because we expect it to be setting this to an empty list each time we run the function. So what's going on here is that in Python, default arguments are evaluated once at the time it creates the function. So it's not actually creating a new list each time we run the function. Now, you won't notice this with immutable types like strings and things like that, but with mutable data types like a list, uh, it's going to use that same list that it created when the function was defined. So in the last video, that's about as much detail as I went into. Uh, I then showed that in order to fix the problem, we would just need to set the default argument to none and then set the empty list inside the function. So let me do that again, but this time I'm going to create that function separately so that we can compare these. So I'm just going to copy this function here and I'm going to create a new one and I'm going to call this add employee fixed. And to, in order to fix this function, like I was saying, we can just set the default argument to none. Whoops, that's none. And then inside here, I will say if the employee list is none, then we want to set employee list equal to an empty list. So again, in the original video, that's about as much detail as I went into, but there were still some people confused by this. I had a few people who commented who said, well, if the default arguments are only set once when the function is created, uh, then how is the employee list set to none uh, each time we run the function? So here's where I feel like I failed to provide a proper explanation. So I never said that the default arguments were only set one time when the function is created. Uh, I said that the default arguments were only evaluated one time each time the function is created. So to illustrate this more clearly, we can look at a magic method on our function that holds the default arguments. And I think that's gonna make things a lot more clear as to what's going on here. So first, let me show this on our original function up here. So I'm going to uh, copy our output here 
and paste it in. And let me actually just um, comment those out. Uh, and I'm going to comment these out now uh, for now as well. So right underneath this function here, I'm going to print out add employee. And this has a magic method here called defaults. So, and this isn't actually a method, sorry, it is uh, an attribute. So I don't want to put parentheses there to run it. So if I save this and I run it, then these are the defaults that were created for this function. And this is what only it gets evaluated once. So we can see that this has a default of an empty list, but a list is mutable. So since this was only created once and set as a default here, uh, we can actually add to this list. And each time we run the function, if we don't provide anything for our employee list, then it's going to set it equal to this default value here. But let me show you what happens when we add an employee. So let me add an employee and then I'll print out that default again. So if I save this and I run it, then we can see that the first time through, it evaluated that empty list once. So it says, okay, I have a default value here that is an empty list. Then we added this employee and it appended it to that default list. And then we're printing the list here. So we have a list of one person. And now when we print those defaults afterwards, that original list that it created uh, now has a value. It has a value of Corey. So it's no longer empty because it only creates that empty list that one time. And now we're mutating that list since lists are mutable. So now every time through, uh, if I look at this and I keep adding employees, then every time through it started out as empty. Then we added Corey and now Corey is that default list. And then we added John and now we have Corey and John as that default list. So that's why that keeps getting modified each time uh, we run that function. So now <clears throat> let me show you this with our fixed version where we set this equal to none. Um, so right underneath here, I'm going to print out and I'm just going to get rid of this list here. I don't need that anymore. Um, so now I'm just going to print out add employee fixed dot defaults. And let's look at this. So now when I run this, we can see that we have a default value of none. So that got evaluated once, but just because it got evaluated once doesn't mean that it doesn't get set to that value each time we run the function. If an argument isn't uh, supplied, it'll still set each time through equal to that default value, but it's only evaluated one time. And if this still doesn't make sense, then I think it'll really knock it home once we look at the date time example down here at the bottom. Uh, but for now, let's just stick with this example. So now I'm going to uncommon out adding one employee here, and then I'm going to uh, print out the defaults after we add that employee. Let me make this a little smaller here so that we can see a little bit more of the code here. So now I'm going to save this and run it. And we can see that the first time through, it evaluated this statement one time of employee, the default of employee list is equal to none. So that was our default. And we can see that here. So then we added an employee and it came up here and it said, okay, uh, so we don't have an employee list that we want to append to. So this is equal to none. Uh, so by default, it sets that equal to none. Then we come in here in the function and it says, okay, if employee list is equal to none, which it is because that's our default, then just create a new empty list. And then we append to that list and print out those employees. So we printed out our one employee that was added to this empty list here. And now when we print out the defaults again afterwards, that default is still equal to none because it's, it, even though it was evaluated one time, uh, that's not mutable. So that's not getting changed each time through like our list was getting changed each time through. So we can come in here and when we're adding more and more employees, so I can add John and save that and run it. Whoops. And it looks like uh, that's a mistake, but it's not. It's because I'm using add employee instead of add employee fixed here. Um, so let me put in add employee fixed there. So now when we run this, now we can see that uh, it's not appending to that list every time because um, th since this is set to none as the default, 
it is still setting employee list to that default value every time we run the function. But the difference between our fixed function and our other function was that when it sets it to none, none is not being modified each time through. Uh, but this mutable default argument, that's the reason that these are a problem, that was getting modified each time through. So when I say that those default arguments are evaluated one time every uh, when the function is created, I don't mean that it only sets that value one time. This is still getting set to this list each time we don't provide a list. And this is still getting set to none each time we uh, don't provide the employee list. Uh, but it's just the initial values is what gets evaluated once. So I really think this point will be knocked home uh, once we look at this date time example down here. Um, so let me show you this example here. And I showed this in the original video as well. So we have a function here called display time, and it takes in time as an argument. And then it's just going to print that out in a special format. Uh, now, if we don't provide a time, then this has a default argument of date time dot now. Now, this isn't exactly the same as mutable default arguments like we were talking about before, but we can still see why this would be a problem if we think about it, uh, because this gets evaluated one time and gets set to those defaults. So if you didn't know that, then what you might expect to happen here is each time we run this function and we don't provide a date, then we would think that it would just use this default value here of date time dot now, and that would be executed each time we run the function. So down here, I'm running display time uh, three different times, but I'm sleeping a second between each time I call that function. So we might expect that since it's using uh, now, that it would increment by a second each time through. But if I run this, then we can see that it does wait a second each time through, but it's not incrementing by a second. So it's just printing out the same time over and over. So why is it doing this? The reason it's doing this, let me print out display time. Uh, and then I will print out those defaults. Whoops, and that's a uh, magic or a dunder attribute there. Uh, so I wanna be sure I have those. And now let me, uh, Actually, I'll keep those in as well. Um, so if I run this now where I'm printing out those defaults, uh, if I run that, then we can see that the default value, it executed this uh, date time dot now and set it here in our defaults. So this is what's going to get, uh, this is the default value that it's going to be set to every time we run the function. So. And we can see here that it's 10 seconds into the minute. And that's what gets run. Every time we run display time, it gets set there. Even, even though we're sleeping, it's still the same default value here. Uh, so that was evaluated once. And now that is our default value. It's not uh, being set to the actual dot now each time the function is executed. It's being set to this default here. So that's probably not what you would expect to happen if you didn't know about this. So again, the fix for this, uh, like we saw, like I showed in the last video, in the common mistakes video, is to just set that equal to none. And now we'll say if the time to print is none, then we want to uh, set the time to print equal to date time dot now. Whoops, sorry, date time dot now. So now when we run this, I can see here that our default value is equal to none. Uh, so it's not evaluating that date time dot now, uh, that one time when we create the function. So it comes in here and it says, okay, I'm running display time. They didn't provide me a time to print out. So I'm gonna set this equal to none. So if time to print is none, which it is each time through, then we want the time to print to be equal to date time dot now. Now this does get executed each time we run the function uh, because it's coming in here and running this code every time we run the function. So now we can see that our seconds are being updated like we would expect uh, because it's sleeping for one second in between those function calls. Okay, so now let me close this and uh, just scroll up here a little bit. Okay, so that's all I wanted to show in this video, just a quick little update uh, to that last video I put out. I hope that this was a lot more clear this time around when I actually showed this defaults value here and how that gets evaluated once. But 
uh, the general confusion seemed to be that people were wondering like, okay, well, if it's evaluated once, they seem to think that it meant that it was only set one time and that it didn't set these default values each time you run the function. It does, but if you use something that is executed or a mutable default argument, then that's where you run into problems like we saw in this video. So I hope that this video cleared up any confusion that may be lingering after that last video where I didn't go into as much detail. Uh, but if you do have any further questions, then feel free to ask in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer those. And if you enjoy these tutorials and would like to support them, then there are several ways you can do that. The easiest way is to simply like the video and give it a thumbs up. And also it's a huge help to share these videos with anyone who you think would find them useful. And if you have the means, you can contribute through Patreon and there's a link to that page in the description section below. Be sure to subscribe for future videos and thank you all for watching.